So uh, we continue. I would uh, I would um, think that this is uh, part that will take less time, but I'm not sure. Mm, I thought that the Green's function for the scattering problem was going to take less time as well. It, it took 30 minutes, but um, well, it's not too much time either because I was going through all the steps and I wanted to be pretty explicative with, with things. So, um, but then we will start like this. So our goal is to find an alternative way to compute the time evolution operator. That's what the path integral is. So there's nothing more to that. So if if somebody comes to you and ask you, so uh, what's a path integral? So it's just another way to calculate time evolution. So then, uh, I mean, you don't have to psychoanalyze that. There's not... Uh, a lot more to path integrals now so um, the thing with this is that um, when we uh, let's say when we try to pull away to um, to come up with an alternative manner to evaluate the time evolution for a quantum system like what we have here so what we basically get at is at an equation that looks very much like the type of equations that we had in 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 the theory of electromagnetic waves when we used to solve the non-homogeneous wave equation with um, with Green's functions. So then, and and at the end of the day, we will see that the propagator, the the Feynman propagator. So how it's called the path integral, it coincides structurally with the Green's function. So then, so we'll start like this. So here, just we have the basic relation for time evolution in the Ket space. So then, so this is the same as when you just used to have your arbitrary, um, this isn't just an arbitrary state in the Hilbert space and you time evolve it so then this is at t equal to zero and then you just time evolve this between t and zero so there's nothing more to it so then um, something that you can do here so you can do several things so first you can start by uh, acting on 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 this cat with this bra that it, it will be a, a, an eigenstate of the position operator and basically what you're doing is that you're projecting this vector onto the x basis so then and this becomes the no wave function but and the other thing that you can actually do is that here in between these two guys you just introduce a resolution of the identity in position basis okay so then this is what you have here and then this quantity that we have here so that quantity is basically what we're going to uh, but it's but it's known as a, as a propagator so then this tells you how do you actually go from a point x prime to point x so then this is what that's why this is called a propagator so and in notation wise so first you have to know that this is another wave function so then this is the wave function evaluated at x prime and t prime and then you have here this notation for the propagator so this is just a probability amplitude from for going from x prime at t prime to x at t. So then, and basically, the form that we have here, this looks like a convolution integral between between that propagator and this wave function. So then, and we write it like this, and we define that as a Green's function, which, as I said, has the same structure. Well, a very similar structure is just a little bit more general than the structure that we have for solving the wave the electromagnetic wave equation using Green's function now this is known as the propagator which is a quantum amplitude to start at x prime 
in x prime at t prime and n in x at t. So then, so we just said. Now the propagator is the Green's function for the time dependent Stranger equation, which is this, and therefore that propagator has to satisfy, in some sense, this Stranger equation. So then this is what we're going to do next. Well, not next, but later. So now, big question is, if that's an alternative way to compute the time evolution operator, how do we proceed? How do we do it? So then this is, uh, this is, this is a, a quite an important question now. So um, what we can what we can do so it's basically this so um, um, I don't know if I mentioned during the course that uh, one of the properties of the of the unitary this is important the unitary evolution operator this is essential for this it has to be unitary so then is that you can basically split the evolution operator as much times as you want and just so um, so that's basically what we did here and now in between these two in between these two um, evolution operators i introduce another resolution of the identity and then basically, well, this is sub one. Well, that was a mistake there. So then, and this is what we have. Now, we have that the propagator, it's just now the convolution of two individual propagators. Now, you can do the same thing, n minus one times, and start. So what basically, what that basically means is that you can split u of t, t prime, you can say that is equal of u of t comma t1 times u of t1 comma t2 times u of t2 comma t3 times n times you can do that and this is u of tn comma t prime so then this is uh, what basically we have here so um, or n minus 1 I mean because that will be n plus one times. So, if you do that uh, like this uh, n times, and then you introduce an identity resolution in between each time evolution operator, so basically the propagator that you have here will be just this integral over all these uh, positions x1, x2, up to xn minus 1. And then this will be the product of all these uh, propagators. So that is the n minus one point convolution of these propagators. So, so okay. So basically, this is what we have here is what we call a path integral. See, because this corresponds to actually integrate over all possible ways in a phase space that you have or all the possibilities that you have to go from x to, from x prime to x. So you have many paths and you're going to integrate over all those paths which are x1, x2 up to x and minus 1. So then now we're going to do just some things. We're going to do this a little bit like uh, Sakurai does it. It's not my uh, favorite way because it skips a little bit some stuff but uh, i would say that this is a intuitive way that that it's important to know how to get there from this perspective so now we define delta t as ti plus one minus ti over n that means that as the number of times that you split your time evolution operator becomes infinite so this delta t it will become zero now, the propagator denotes the sum over all possible paths that a particle can take starting at x prime, t prime, and ending at x t. So that's what we just said. And then we're going to denote that integral that we have there. So this integral here, 
So we're going to denote it as the integral from xi to xf of something that is called the functional derivative, this thing here, dx, this d, d, uh, like capital dx. So it's just basically the product of all these differentials. And this has something there. I, we don't know what it is. I mean, it. so basically, uh, it's just whatever you get from the multiplication of all these propagators. So, but we just don't know what it is yet. So, we will know. So, uh, now, so what is the integrand? So, this, what is that something that we have to do? So, this, consider the classical limit with h bar is equal to zero here. There is a unique classical trajectory when h bar is equal to zero from xi to xf. So this is well known from, see, from classical mechanics. If you go <clears throat> from one point to another point, there's just one trajectory that minimizes the action. That is, that minimizes the amount of energy they have to input to produce a transit in that particle from xi to xf. And that's basically equal to this factor here. So, um, n, uh, so basically what I just said, this is uh, that, that S that we have there is evaluated in the solution of the minimum action principle, that if we use the Lagrangian, it looks in this way, see? Uh, n and that S, which is the action, is just a function of X of T when H bar equals to zero, so then now, as h bar equal to 0, was s of x, comma, x prime is evaluated in dx, ds dx equal to 0, is evaluated in the classical path. See, so then uh, this is how we know what do we have to have there as that something. So then for the most classical case, that something should bear the classical trajectory from going from, of going from xi to xf. Now, how do we evaluate that specific path integral? So then we just um, will use uh, what we know about the 1D integral. So we approximate the 1D integral as follows. So then like the Riemann sum. So that means that the integral of fx dx can be approximated as the sum from n equal to infinity, from n tending to infinity of the sum of over n of f of xn times dx. So then this is basically, uh, uh, yeah, that's basically what we have there. So, and we can do the following. So then this uh, n to the power of n is just a normalization constant that has to be there. Uh, we just expand this dx in in this in this product of differentials see and then the action what's the action so the action can be approximated by the integral over time of the lagrangian density and then we will choose the lagrangian density in such a way that we have a kinetic term like this minus a potential term like that and then we're going to uh, discretize in 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 the grid that we have defined between ti and ta this um this lagrangian density so we will say that so basically we have this dt here is going to be a delta t here uh this uh, is going to be the sum from i equal to zero to n minus one and um, so this is one half m so we have the velocity square, which is xi minus xi plus 1 over delta t square minus delta minus v of xi. So and if we elaborate a little bit, so we end up with this um, action that we have here. So um, that's basically what we have. Now, if we just introduce this in... in 
in the model that we have remembered that uh, this part here is just the product of all these integrands here so we can express that as this product from i equal to 0 to n minus 1 of the xi so that looks quite okay and then we have this exponential of this action that we have here as we said this n to the power of uh, little n is just the normalization factor so now the propagator the propagator between t prime and t plus delta t is just going to be the propagator since we use the same property I was used for the uh, time evolution operator so then this is basically the propagator of going from uh, basically um, x prime at t prime to x n at t n times the propagator of going from x n at t n to x at t plus delta t so we replace that here we just have this propagator here and uh, so um, what that basically means is that this problem that we have here is going to be equal to this thing here see times this other propagator that we have Taylor expand as you can see here see we have Taylor expand that propagator so then afterwards we're going to Taylor expand as well this exponential but just to first order then we Taylor expand that to first order so we get this times that integral times all this Taylor expansion so this is a bit uh, like confusing at the meantime, but uh, let's let's uh, do this uh, fast. So so basically, if we inner multiply, so that means if we multiply this integral by every single term of this Taylor expansion, what we will end up with is this factor n times the Taylor expansion of the uh, exponential of that uh, delta t times the potential times this first integral which is just uh, kind of like a Gaussian integral so this propagator here does not depend on x n that's the of course the trick of using the Taylor expansion so then uh, then we have the same term but multiplied by the Gaussian integral that depends on the derivative times this linear factor x minus xn that will be equal to zero see because you do know that the the this this Gaussian in that case has uh, is a zero mean Gaussian see so then so that's uh, basically what will happen and um, we can show the following I mean this is quite simple to show you have this Gaussian integral which is equal to this this we did in class I believe and this uh, integral of x squared times e to the minus alpha s squared dx is equal to this I believe that we did this in class as well so that means that the uh, this integral this Gaussian integral is going to be equal to that and this other Gaussian integral that is multiplying x minus xn to the power of 2 so is this going to be equal to this when we replace all of that uh, in 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 our propagator between x prime t prime and x and t plus delta t so we get this thing here see now what we can see is straight ahead is that uh, if we impose that that factor n has to be equal to that so uh, and by Taylor expanding the left hand side of the propagator which is basically just this we will Taylor expand this which is equal to the stellar expansion so we say that this is equal to this see 
when we impose that, of course, n has to be that. See, so then, now, what have we done in the process? So then this is very important. So then in the process, we have some terms. So for instance, this term here, this delta t plus this delta t, um, it will be of the order of delta t squared. See, so then we have ignored those terms where um, delta t um, goes as a, as a power of 2. And if we ignore those terms, then we will end up in this type of expression that comes out of the propagator. See, so that means that the propagator actually fulfills this expression. So then, of course, as we said, we have ignored the terms of delta t squared, which will, let's say, basically will enhance the idea that this propagator satisfies a wave equation, which is not the case for non-relativistic quantum mechanics. So then, and basically, if we multiply both sides by ih bar, we arrive at this. Or then, we will end up with this. So then we can see from here that the propagator satisfies the time dependent Stranger equation. See? And which propagator satisfies that? So then this propagator that uh, we have uh, formulated here. So is this one. This is another way to calculate the time evolution between T i and X i and T f and S f. Um, there is a nice exercise that is just yet to be done. Um, I will upload a different video for this. Um, after you have, of course, dive into all this theory and you uh, kind of um, you kind of know what you were, what you're talking about here. So then they have a propagator is a way to calculate the time evolution, an alternative way to calculate the time evolution. And on top of that, um, uh, it's something that uh, it will satisfy Scrunge's equation, non-relativistic Scrunge equation. So then you just have some sort of idea of, of what this is, but you will not get the complete flavor until you do your calculation. So then, um, mm, so what I propose is in the next video, we will calculate this propagator for the free particle. So then, and you will see that basically this propagator for the free particle is the propagator that governs the dynamics of the green of, of the wave function of the free particle. And if you remember for the free particle, as time elapses, so you might end up with something like this, you might start with something like this, and as time elapses, so then the, the wave function for the uh, free particle will start dispersing all over the universe. So then you can see that this behavior, this this propagation in time of the free particle is actually governed by a Green's function that we can obtain from the idea of this Feynman propagator. So then this is uh, kind of all that I wanted to say about this. We uh, have 23 minutes now. Mm. So we obtain the propagator in a very uh, simple manner just by uh, starting from a general solution to the wave function and from there we just started uh, you know splitting the the time evolution operator and then we just starting in by introducing uh, identity resolution in resolutions in between each of those time evolution operators and at the end we just arrived at the at the idea that this propagator is just the product of all these integrals over all these possible paths that uh, will take a particle in phase space from x prime t prime to x t. So then this is kind of the basic idea. So of course um, you're free to ask all questions regarding this, but um, I suggest uh, for you to just wait until we we have the chance to to 
to make some examples, basically free particle and harmonic oscillator, which are the typical examples that one can uh, use to motivate the path integral and, and how it works. So thanks for watching.